Hey there everyone, this is Joe and welcome to your weekly precious metals and crypto analysis brought to you by Ainsley Bullion and the gold and silver standard. We'll take a look at gold, then silver, then this one here, it's XLM Stellar, although we'll come back to that one, we'll do that one last. Use the time codes below to go to your favorite one straight away. Let's take a look at gold. We always use the tradingview.com website, it's priced in US dollars, 1969 roughly and we're on the weekly time frame at the moment so let's pop on the indicators and have a quick chat about what we were talking about last week so in last week's video uh, gold analysis we were talking about this level right here of where about 1960 US dollars I was suggesting last week and I'll put a link above to that video right now just for the proof of it I was suggesting this might be an area of support seeing as though we had come up to this area right here 2008 2010 dollars uh, it was looking a little toppy on the daily relative strength index so I was, was suggesting you know just watch out for this area right here what we really needed to see was the price hold and close above on the monthly time frame above this $1,990 to $2,000 level in order for me to be confident to say um, November was going to be a, a real up month. Doesn't mean it won't be because we're still, what's the November the 8th, so still in the early stages, but I was suggesting that, you know, a bit of a, a downward movement might be coming and again, so far, support at that level that I popped in there, 1960 US dollars. So on the daily time frame, we are trending down at the moment on the daily relative strength index. You could easily find a support level though, and you could find that probably around about this level here, about 50 seems about right. Can you see that level? right here of resistance and around about that yeah around about 50 that halfway point so a few more days down you know I wouldn't be too stressful about it if we're going to pierce the halfway point on the relative strength index on the daily time frame I'd be getting a little concerned that we're starting to head down a bit further uh, so so far so good we have remained above that 1960 level so far so that's good obviously what we need to do is we need to break above and hold above, as I said, the for a close above on the monthly time frame, uh, this $1990 to $2,000 level. Ultimately, what I would really love to see is it close above this downtrend line right here, piercing through that $2,010 level. Let's pop out to the weekly time frame, see where we are on the weekly uh, and the relative strength index on the weekly time frame. We're heading up into overbought territory but we're not there yet okay so for example look it's a little curve over that doesn't mean we're trending downwards now so you can certainly see a little curve and then back up again we will eventually of course have to eventually go into extremely overbought territory at some point just depends on what uh what point that is or where that is but this 1960 level is looking like a good support level so far but if we do break down from here i do have this fibonacci level right here of 1925 us dollars that's the big line in the sand around about 19 20 1925 really need to hold that uh, so if we do break down another you know red week or another two red weeks then got to hold this 1920 to 1925 area uh, and obviously most people don't believe that triple tops are a thing top 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 we did have that false breakdown right back down to that 1810 area that i'd had uh, drawn in before we hit there um, and then a quick move back up so most people believe that you won't see lower prices uh, than this triple tops are usually not a thing double tops are a thing where you can see a massive um, move downwards triple tops usually not a thing they can happen but more rare so most people I think seem confident that we are onwards and upwards in the next number of months so this could just be a little blip along the way do we find support here at 1960 or do we come down to this big line in the sand at 1920 1925 that remains to be seen but again down to here don't panic is is the short one so it might be a possible good buying opportunity of course if you're dollar cost averaging 
Uh, and it happens to coincide around this time when you get your next you know, paycheck or next two paychecks. Well, you know, loading up here, uh, of course, not financial advice, but many people might, you know, uh, tend to want to do that. So again, just want to see it close above this area on the monthly time frame. This is the monthly candles right now. So look again, if we see a red month can, and all the way back down to again to that 1920, 1925 level, we want to see it bounce from there. I don't want to see it close below there. So that's the areas that we are looking at. And we've certainly talked about the areas uh, moving high. You can watch the previous video, which I linked to before, talking about sort of the blue sky thinking of, you know, the next uh, levels moving higher for gold in the next few months and year or so. Post a comment below. Do you disagree with my assessment right here? I think it's pretty logical, but of course, everyone has their differing opinions. And I'd love to hear your opinion. Do you have different uh, types of uh, technical analysis that you use? Anything else like Elliott Wave, uh, Ichimoku Clouds, anything like that? You uh, let me know what works for you. I find that trend lines, support and resistance, horizontal lines and Fibonacci tend to be the top three for me. Oh, and of course, the relative strength index as well. And if we take a look at that on the monthly time frame for gold, you can very see, clearly see uh, that we're still above that average. We had that little dip. And again, that was that false breakdown to 18.10, a little blip below the average. But since here, so that's November of 2022, we've been above it, that little blip, that was a fake out. We're now back above it. And it still looks like we're on our way to trending up based as i say like as i said with the weekly time frame uh you know we will spend time in overbought territory eventually for gold and that's when you start to consider once we head above this level right here of that 70 level on the relative strength index on the monthly time frame that's when you start to consider uh where you are within your portfolio etc do you want to rebalance uh but you know of course not financial advice and all that but I would certainly say that we've got to wait until we break into here before we see any kind of top. In my humble opinion, not financial advice, not necessarily the opinion of Ainsley, the company itself. That is gold. Let's take a look at silver. Now, this is on the monthly. I might just get rid of that just for a second. Monthly time frame, $22.63. Go down to the daily and pop it onto the auto. Okay, very clearly. And I'll pop on my indicators right again. So as you can see, last week we were talking about this downtrend line. We're talking about this downtrend line, which we recently broke out of. We had this Fibonacci right on the money on this Fibonacci level at $20.70. We broke through there. I had this horizontal line right here, this blue line at $23.50 roughly. Uh, I had that in before we got to it. Uh, so we have seen that one, two levels of resistance on the daily time frame that is. And then I did pop in this 2230 area. And we've also seen that it's not exact, but we've seen a little bit of support so far close to that area. Uh, on the daily time frame, we are trending down a little bit. So if we do move down, past this $22.30 area, the next area of support I'd be looking at will be uh, butting up against this downtrend line here. So if we come down to, let's just say, and this is all hypothetical, right? Let's just say in the next few days, so by the end of this uh, trading week, let's say we come down to, what's that, is that Friday? That's Tuesday, that's Friday the 17th. That's the 17th, sorry, so I've got to get that's. Friday, oh, the 10th, there we go. If we have a big move in the next couple of days uh, down to this area here of $20, $21.70, don't panic just yet because that, again, that could potentially be just a retest or a second retest of this area. So $21.70 would be the lowest for me. And I wouldn't want to see the relative strength index on the daily time frame go anything below. Let's have a look right here. I would say anything below that 40 level. Now, can you see it right here? Let me pop in a horizontal line for you. And you can see that area of support right there. And that's also an area of support right there. So it's actually not at 41, sorry, it's around about 36. I wouldn't want to see it uh, sneak below there. Then I would be quite concerned. Uh, but those are the levels moving lower. We have to break above here. And we definitely have to break above this uh, downtrend line right here. The big ones coming is the 26, but we'll 
Uh, once we're in that general area, then we'll start talking about that infamous $26 level. Once again, just got to break above this downtrend line. Just depend, the price depends on when it hits. It could be anywhere between, say, $24 roughly to $24.50. Well, $24.40 roughly. But got to break above there. That is silver. Oh, actually, no, I will keep going because I will show you the weekly time frame as well. Where are we directionally wise? Let's have a quick look. So red week, obviously, so far. And good news so far, at least. Let's have a look on the relative strength index. OK, we're actually below the average for now. So, OK, we just really need to hold that $22.30 level preferably uh, and again preferably no lower than that 2170 level I would say so I'm going to stay look if I'm bullish on gold which I am I then naturally have to be bullish on silver because where gold goes silver tends to follow uh, it although I can lag a little bit though so I would suggest that uh, you may see another red week coming quite possibly but if we get down to that 2170 level don't panic that might be a good little buying opportunity for you uh, so still bullish on gold on silver so more than 50 percent chance of course uh, and we just really need to break above this area right there so that is silver that's for the weekly and let's really take a quick look at the monthly as well look currently underneath the average so you know Potentially what you could see, and uh, no one has a, uh, a crystal ball, but what you could potentially see for the next couple of weeks or even couple of months is a continuation of the gold-silver ratio to go higher, which means gold is outperforming silver. And that can mean one of a few things. That can mean that gold is going up faster than silver is going up. It can mean that gold is going up and silver is just kind of stagnant. It can also mean that gold is going up and silver is going down. Okay, and that's why you would see this rise. I've still got that target around about 90 area uh, as an area of resistance. So gold might still outshine silver for the next few weeks. Uh, remains to be seen though. So just bear that in mind though. It doesn't mean that, oh no, silver's dead, it's gone, it's buried, uh, etc. It just means maybe gold's just outshining silver for a little bit and then silver tends to catch up where gold goes to. Uh, so if you're into silver, you know, if you're dollar cost averaging again, now uh, is uh, our if you're looking to um, uh, back up the truck, as they say, or put a little bit more in, you know, these areas around here, you know, not financial advice, but uh, do consider them. So that is gold and silver. Now let's take a look at our crypto of the week. Now I'm doing XLM Stellar because over the years I've actually found that Many, many people that I've personally served uh, in store, uh, if they've been into crypto, a lot of them have mentioned XLM. They've mentioned XRP, they've mentioned Ripple, they've mentioned Cardano, so ADA, and men many of them have also mentioned Stellar as well. So a lot of people who own Ripple, uh, XRP, also own some Stellar as well because they share uh, some commonalities. Uh, so and I'll leave it at that in terms of uh, their commonalities, but many people are in XLM as well. So let's take a look at this. This is on the monthly time frame XLM in USD. It's currently at 12 and a half cents roughly. Let's pop into the weekly time frame, do some really quick analysis with some trend lines, some support and resistance, and I'll do a quick bit of Fibonacci as well. So this is when it rough. This is the Bitfinex. Uh, exchange and this was the one that went back as far as it could so I think this is April of 2018 when the exchange first listed it it's probably going to be one of the first ones that did list it Bitfinex is an, quite an old exchange older than Binance uh, for example but Binance did list it pretty soon uh, afterwards but we're taking the Bitfinex one so this is the uh, the opening of, of the Bitfinex exchange at around about 50 cents we had this low in March 2020 what happened there you know that's around about two and a half cents roughly and then in the last crypto run in 
May of 2021, it topped out at around about 80 cents. And then since then, we've had a move back down to what is quite possibly the low at 7 cents roughly. So quick look, let's do some trend line analysis. Pretty easy stuff to look at. You can pop through there. What you can see, we definitely need to move above this downtrend line in order to be confident that we're on our way upwards. Also, you can see here that a confluence of resistance right there, that's previous support became resistance right here. That's around about your 20 cent mark. Let's just call it around about there. So you can see that 20 cent mark right there. Uh, very, very crucial to get over and hold over most definitely on the weekly time frame definitely on the monthly time frame but if you start to creep above here you could call this the um the alert line if you want to call it that so if it breaks above and closes on the weekly time frame then you think oh okay we might be making a play for this until it does that until it breaks above that then just be wary that you know we are still that the uh, xlm might not be in a, a bull market just yet but of course taking into account that if you believe XRP is, uh, if you believe that other ones like Cardano and Bitcoin, etc., are in a bull market, then most will tend to follow. You know, a rising tide tends to raise all ships. But just bear in mind, you won't see a huge breakout level, the, oh my goodness, we're on our way to the moon, until at least this is broken, giving you the first alert. And then this one here, the 20 cent, that's the big mark. Got to close above that on the monthly time frame, in my humble opinion. So that is trend line and just some support and resistance. Now let's do some quick Fibonacci. I'm going to take it from the opening here, around about that 50 cent level, and I'll take it down to the March 2020 low and see if we have any confluence. Can we find any predictive stuff here? I'm going to take it to about December of 2025. And that's looking pretty good. So if I take that to right here to that 48.50 cent level, goodness me, well, you can certainly see some levels of confluence right there. I'm actually going to get rid of that line because that's, look at that, that's intersecting almost exactly with that uh, support and resistance level. So I'm actually going to get rid of that blue line right there so you can see that more clearly. So such is the power of Fibonacci for me. It's not a perfect tool. It won't work 100% all the time, but I do find it quite predictive over longer periods and on the logarithmic time scale as well. And why is that? There could be a number of reasons, but I think it's basic psychology. If enough people use this tool and they believe it to be a predictive tool, then they post their trades uh, in that fashion. And then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. But what you can see here very clearly that high and that low, the last cycle of May 2021, basically right on the money there, the 1.618, that's at 75 cents. And I think technically we topped out at that, was that 80 cents, 79 cents, 80 cent level. So right there, so that was definitely seems predictive. And then back on the way down from there, Again, you've got this 20 cent level, that's the 0.382 again from this old high back in April of 2018 and the March 2020 lows. So you've got that support level right there. And since then, you can see this on the weekly, maybe I'll pop it onto the daily. No, I'll just keep it at the weekly. While it hasn't been absolutely perfect, you can see that there are levels of support. You can see even in here, for example, a trading range within a few weeks between this level and this level. Again, not there, but you can see the list level of resistance right here. And then, then you get into the, the big no man's land range area between the zero mark and the 0.236 mark but you can see right here it was a level of resistance a couple of times we tried to break through here tried to break through here didn't occur and then we finally did and then we broke right up to what do you know now it was this previous level of support but that was again that's a fibonacci level that is the 0.382 that's the 20 cent level uh right there so for me, I'm still going to use this old high and this old low, low as a guide moving on the way up to, if we get, ever get there, to the all-time high. And actually for me, I will keep it for now 
as uh, the next levels of potential new all-time highs, uh, if we ever get there, of course, not financial advice and, and all that sort of stuff. You know, we, we might not. We might just settle in the next crypto cycle at, you know, somewhere around the key levels. Now, let, let's talk about that for a, sec- for a second. If we were not to break all-time high in the next crypto cycle, what would be the most logical price for me? And I think it's going to be at the uh, original opening right here on the Bitfinex exchange. It's sort of coincides around about that 45 to 50 cent mark. So if I pop in right here, a rectangle, and I'll pop it in right there at, let's just call it 45 to 50 cents right there. That would seem a logical area, again, if we don't see a huge push through the all-time high to make new all-time highs. So right about that, the 50 cent level. So we're at uh, 12 and a half cents right now. So let's take a look. What What is that? Again, none of this is certainly not saying we're going there. This is just, you know, the what if scenarios. If, you know, the rising tides raise all ships and XLM is part of that, then you're talking about around about a 250, 270% move. Uh, now, I'll also pot it, pop in a horizontal line, uh, sorry, a, a vertical line, and that's going to be right here at around about November, December of 2025. Again, not financial advice, and this is just basing it on previous cycles, uh, but many people talk about um, the timing of the cycle, and rather rather than what price an asset is going to hit, a particularly a crypto asset is going to hit, more about just whatever that price is when the timing is hit. So in the last couple of cycles, it's been around the November, December area um, every four years uh, where you find the prices tend to top out at, again, with that sort of one month time frame between November and December. So I've got that in at December roughly. You could actually just move that a little bit if you wanted to. You could pop that right about there, the 1st of December. Let's just call it that. So, for example, um, that could be an area uh, of uh, resistance or a big peak if we do break all-time high. So that's my first one there, around about 50 cents if we don't break the all-time high. But if this plays out like it had in the last couple of cycles and that November, December of 2025 level uh, is a big level of peak uh, in a, a big peak level in uh, the crypto cycle, then let's take a look at a couple of areas. So what I'll do here, I'll have a look right here. You've got the 2.618, that's at $1.20 roughly. You've got the 4.236, that's at $1.90. And you've got the 6.854, that's at $3.05 roughly. What I would also pop in to see if there's any areas of confluence, I'll pop in a trend line between this well, top, well, this opening really, and this top right here. And does anything, uh, let's see, any levels of confluence right here? You can see, okay. So again, this is all spitballing kind of stuff. Nothing is, you know, ever goes according to plan. Nothing's ever perfect, all that sort of stuff, okay? But what you can see here is a rough kind of confluence around about that level of that, I think it's that $1.90 to $2.00 level. So pop in that brush right here. You can see it's around about that level here. Could be an area, again, if the cycle plays out like it has in the last couple of cycles where the November, December area is a period where Bitcoin and the other uh, alts, Ethereum, etc. and all the altcoins have their big peak uh, pricing then you could see potentially this area, again, because it butts up against this trend line as well. So you would imagine this trend line would act as some kind of level of resistance. It happens to uh, coincide right here with this Fibonacci level. So on balance of probability, again, if, if everything aligns, then this rough area, and you're talking around about your $1.80 to $2, let's call it. So $1.80 to $2 might be an area of major resistance in the next peak cycle, the next cycle peak, I should say. And again, from here, that's a 12 and a half cents roughly. Let's take it from there. That's approximately a $1,400 move from here. Now, 
absolutely not saying that that is going to happen, not financial advice, not necessarily advice of Ainsley. It's just a couple of areas to watch out for. That 50 cent mark, if we are indeed ever even going to break out of here, that's not even confirmed just yet. But blue sky thinking if we do that 50 cent level and if we break all time high and all the other cryptos are having their big crypto peak uh, and if the, all the others are breaking their all-time highs, well, it sort of makes sense that Stellar uh, would do too. Uh, it's been around for a long time, and it's quite favored by Ripple XRP owners as well. And if, again, if we're going to follow the last couple of cycle patterns, then this November-December area might be an area to look out for. Again, $1.80 to $2 US, that is. So that's my opinion on... XLM, we've done gold, we've done silver, we've done the crypto for the week. Is there a particular crypto that you want to see? I'll always do gold and silver. Sometimes I'll do platinum. Is there a particular crypto that you want to see a quick a bit of analysis on? Post a comment below and uh, let me know. And hopefully in the next video, it might be yours. What I'd love you to do, of course, is head over to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ainsley Bullion. Please like, share, and subscribe. That's been your weekly precious metals and crypto analysis for this week. My name's Joe. Balance your wealth in an unbalanced world. Take care. We'll see you next time.